Welcome to Farm Term Chic. I'm Emily. In today's episode, I am back with some beautiful Easter decor for you. These are fun DIYs. They're simple, but they really make a statement. I think you're really going to like them. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, I would love if you would consider subscribing. If you do like any of today's projects, remember to hit that thumbs up. But let's go make some DIYs. I've been holding on to this sign since Christmas time. I picked it up at Hobby Lobby and I believe it was even part of like their 50% off Christmas. So it was just a few dollars for this sign. And then this cute little bunny and carrot sign came from Dollar Tree this year. And this was the first year I had ever seen these signs. There's two different versions of it, one with a white bunny and then one with the brown bunny. And I thought with this white sign, the brown bunny would pop a little bit more. And uh, the white bunny, I think, says like hippity hoppity or something. And this one says happy Easter. But they're really cute. If you find them, pick them up because I think there's so many fun different DIYs that you could do with them. But I just thought instead of having it hang the way that it came from Dollar Tree, adding it to a different sign would kind of elevate it, make a little, make it look like a little bit more like a statement piece, something that was a little bit more high end. And so as I'm laying this out on the sign here, I'm realizing that I really don't like his bow that he has on there. And so his little bow tie. So I'm going to take that off. It came off very easily. While I was at it, the little uh, twine bow and the carrot was a little dilapidated so I took it off as well and then I have these little uh, ribbon rosette things here and so I thought they might be kind of cute on there uh, when I opened them up and placed them on here and I think I just got these in the wedding section that you can see that they were on clearance there um, but I was like well do I want two of them or one or maybe I make it like a Mrs. Bunny and place it up by the ears like a little bow but I was kind of like it's a little plain even though the rosa by itself is very pretty you know it almost looks like it could be like his little cotton tail or something right but i have this orange burlap ribbon here and i thought well this is really cute what if i made a little orange bow tie and then had um, the rosette sitting on top of it so that's what i end up doing i just uh, folded the ribbon together and pinched it in the middle and then i'm just tying it off with a little piece of jute twine that's going to mimic that little bow shape without having to actually tie the bow it's very easy to do and it's very simple and it looks just like a cute little bow there so after I get that tied I'll just cut those little twine tails off and you're not going to see those at all so you can see I'm going to do that right here and then I'll just take some hot glue and I'm just going to glue that little um, rosette right in the middle of the bow tie but I just think that those look so cute layered together and it kind of just I mean you have that little bow on it the bow was cute so I mean if you wanted to make it super simple you could leave that but doing little things like this to pieces that you get at Dollar Tree really do um, elevate them to a point where they're just um, first of all it makes it your personality because you're creating it how you want but it really just takes it to another level and just makes it so fun to create because there's endless possibilities that you can do with these things here now for the carrot I just took some twine and I wrapped it around like two or three of my fingers maybe like 10 times I kind of wanted a little bit of a thicker bow since the bunny has a thicker bow on it and the same thing I just tie it off in the middle just with a knot and then you can leave the tails on this you can cut the tails it's up to you but it just kind of like you can fluff out those little loops of the twine it just makes it look like a really nice thick bow and I really liked how that looked after I get the twine all tied off there, I'm just using a little bit of hot glue to put that onto the carrot. And now I want to go ahead and get these set down on our sign. So I'm just outlining our little bunny here with the glue so that way all of the edges will be glued down nice and tight. Just make sure you get their feet really well, everything. You just don't want this lifting or peeling up at all. And then I even just kind of go through, put a little line of glue down the middle. You know, just use a whole bunch of glue there because you don't want this bunny going anywhere. And then you just kind of center him up. I'm just centering the feet a little bit. Uh, depending on the size of your sign, you may need to like trim his feet or even just like sand around him a little bit. Uh, if you need to do that, that's fine too. Uh, you just want to make sure that he's not hanging over any of the edges of the sign. Now, I thought it would be really cute to kind of put the happy and Easter at an angle there, kind of opposite each other. So it adds a little bit of uh, character to the sign. Um, but some people don't love that. So if you wanted to do it totally, straight that would be fine too I just really kind of like the visual interest that it did kind of makes it look just fun and whimsical on here now I felt like the Easter sign was a little plain since I had the cute bow on the bunny
honey and then I had the little twine bow on the carrots so I added just a couple little sprigs of some boxwood on the back a little bit of greenery you'll have to let me know if you like this or not I really went back and forth on it and I kind of decided eventually that well everything else had something added to it so I did it and I kind of like how it adds a little bit of that greenery onto the sign too and then you can see I just glued those on the back so they kind of peek out and then we're just gonna do the same process with this. Just putting some hot glue on the back of it and making sure this is pressed down. And when I push these down, I hold them for just a little bit. So that way I let the glue dry before just like putting it down, lifting it up, because sometimes that um, the piece can still lift up if you're not letting that glue kind of dry and get that bond. But I really do like the look of how they're kind of uh, cattywampus or ski wampus however you want to say it i just thought they looked really cute there now this sign was originally meant to hang this sideways here like this you can see so i'm just taking that rope twine off at the back i'll take the price tag off of it at this point here and you can use your staple removers to remove those staples on the back there and that excess piece of twine so they're not on there especially if you're going to resell this you're going to want to do that and so I just want to make sure that I have the twine in the right position here to hang. So I'm just taking my ruler and this sign was like 10 inches. So I'm just marking the middle and then going out a couple of inches on each side. So that way I know exactly where to staple the rope. That way when it hangs, it's going to hang evenly and not um, lean to the side or anything like that. So and I just follow the same thing that they did. They had three staples in the original one. So I just went down and did the same thing. So and I do that on both of these sides of the twine. I think this sign turned out so dang cute. I just love it. I love the whimsical feel. I love those pops of orange. Uh, I started with a great piece from Dollar Tree. If you find these signs, definitely pick them up because there's so many things. But I just think that adding it to the background like this just really takes it uh, to that high end level and makes it look like such a statement piece. What do you guys think of this? Are you ready for all of the fun Easter DIYs that you can handle? You came to the right place today because today's video is part of a fun Easter collaboration playlist. It is hosted by Liana DIY and our guest host this month is Crafting with Maria. And I am joined by all of these other very talented creators. What we have done is we have all made some fun Easter DIYs. We put them in our own videos, but we have curated them all together on one playlist. All you have to do is click the playlist link that is in my description box or pinned in my comments it will take you right over to the playlist and start playing everybody's videos and you can get all of that fun easter diy inspiration that you're wanting I have been sitting on this birdhouse for the longest time it sat in my stash. And you can see I paid like $3 and change for it. It was on clearance at this little cute farm store in our, or not our neighborhood, but in our town. And I love it and have this beautiful lattice work on here. And I have this candlestick that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and it kind of has like this really distressed look to it. And I thought it would be really cute to put on the bottom of the birdhouse and have that birdhouse sit elevated. But all of this lattice work, I want it to match the candlestick so to do that I'm just taking my emery board and I'm going to take it takes me about five to ten minutes maybe not even quite that long but a little bit of time to sand all of these edges and kind of really have this beautiful uh, lattice work on there I guess is this lattice work scroll work I'm not really sure but anyway whatever it is it's beautiful but I just wanted it to match that candlestick so it all looks cohesive together and so you can kind of see even on the surface, I'll kind of go on there and sand that paint away. Uh, you could even use, if you didn't want to sand, you could just get like a mineral color of paint and do the same effect with paint. I'm using a combination of hot glue and E6000. This is just going to give you that permanent hold with that E6000 and that hot glue is just going to work as that temporary bonding agent while that E6000 cures. So that way it's going to have that quick hold to it. You don't want to use just hot glue in case you were to place this outside because then if you live in a really hot climate, it can melt the glue. And so you just, just make sure that you use both the E6000 and the hot glue on something like of this size here. Now, as I'm doing this and I'm centering this as best I can, I'm looking here going, okay, there's this rope on top of here. I don't know what to do with it because obviously it's not going to hang anymore. So I just took my pliers and I pulled it out, but then realized immediately like, oh, there's a hole in the top of the birdhouse now. So in my mind, well, I would have used wood filler if I would have had that. So that's probably what I would have suggested. But I took a little wooden bead and 
and I put some twine in it um, and I tied a knot at either end of it so that way the twine fit down into the hole so I'm just using some glue on that to get that uh, set down in there and then it's kind of got the little um, knot at the top to kind of finish off the look I don't know maybe it's the bird's chimney I don't know in my mind it worked so uh, but I really do think this turned out so cute and I've been sitting on this birdhouse it sat in my stash for almost three years and I just didn't love the shape of it or how I just want to do something with it and I really think this was the perfect thing to do with it so hopefully you can use this technique with any other birdhouse shapes or things that you find this is so fun because you really could leave this out all year long it's not just a springtime item what do you guys think of this one a little while back, I picked up this cute little house sign from Dollar Tree, and I thought it would be really fun to kind of turn it into a cute little Easter item. Now, I have these little rub-on transfers. You can pick them up at Dollar Tree. I got this from Essential Stencils, which I will link in my description. But even like IOD transfers, you can print on tissue paper, use a sticker. There's so many different options. But I thought it would be really fun to put this on here. It kind of has a postage stamp vibe to it, which I thought was really cute. After I rub the design on there, I am just putting a little bit of Mod Podge on it this is going to help protect that transfer so that way it's not going to scuff or scratch or anything like that and I'm just being careful to only keep it on the transfer because I didn't want anything to like give a different sheen to that chalkboard background that's there now this egg also came from Dollar Tree and I bought this with the sole purpose of trying to get this little tin bunny off of here I thought he was just so cute and I thought it would be so fun to do other projects with him. Plus, then you have a giant egg shape for a different sign if you want. But you can see I'm just using my putty knife. Just go slow and take your time and it will come right off without bending. Just be patient with it. Now, he was very shiny, which would be cute. But I kind of wanted to give him a like rusted look. So I started with some antiquing wax and I just kind of pounced that on. I used a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of Merlot. And I just kind of go all the way, like, pounce back and forth between the different colors to kind of create a rust color. Now you'll have to tell me when this is done. I know the rust isn't everybody's cup of tea and I get that. So paint him white, that would be so cute. But I honestly feel like maybe not so much rusty that he looks like, but he looks like it's his little brown fur or maybe even like a chocolate bunny or something. But I think he turned out pretty cute, but it's just kind of a fun technique to go and kind of make it look like faux rust. But paint him however you want is gonna be darling, even just to leave him the way that it is. Now I'm grabbing a little bit of boxwood that I'm just gluing back behind him, kind of peeking out. And then this is just a little lavender sprig that came off of one of those uh, really cute spring picks that Dollar Tree has. And I'm just putting a little bit of glue on the bottom there. And then I will just kind of hold that in place until it dries to create kind of the floral aspect of it. And I have this little package of nests and I believe I got them at Hobby Lobby and it came with like four in a pack and they're pretty small. And uh, I just am gluing that right on there and I'm gonna make some little eggs in just a minute to go in there. But I felt like it needed a little more color. So I have this, or just some leftover little fuzzy flowers that I had. I did a DIY with them um, a couple videos back and they were really cute, but it was kind of this beautiful orange and yellow colors on them. So I thought it would bring that little spring pop of color into this DIY. So it's fun. You can use just kind of your scrap little uh, florals that you have, little leftovers to kind of make this little vignette and kind of make it really fun and make it your own. Now I'm just taking some air dry clay and I'm just going to roll these into a little egg shape. And uh, if you can find some eggs that are small enough to go in here or put some different eggs, you don't wanna do this step, go for it. Even just like a cute little bird in there would be cute. I just wanted to have these little itty bitty eggs in there. I just thought that would be really fun. As I was making this DIY, I was kind of thinking that this is this cute little rabbit that's visiting his house of his friends, the birds, and maybe he's just watching over their little eggs while they're gone or something. I don't know. I just thought it was really kind of a fun little vignette to create here. Now I'm just doing a little bit of speckling on these eggs to add just a little bit of visual interest. You could leave them white. You could paint them fun colors like a robin's egg color uh, would be really pretty too. I just kind of liked the white on there. I felt like with the black background and where I had the color color in the flowers that the white really kind of popped there and I liked that but I mean definitely make it your own uh, if you decide to recreate this because it's just I mean it's what's so fun about creating these is there's really no right or wrong it's what you like now I had a little bit of antiquing wax left in my brush so I just went over that wood uh, to kind of um, 
rustic it up a little bit. It was kind of a little bit blonde, if you will. So I just kind of was making it tone it down a little bit. Now I did take a little bit of Spanish moss and tuck up in under any empty spaces that were at the bottom there. So like under the uh, nest there, kind of behind the bunny a little bit. I felt like that really, and then I just kind of trimmed it off. I felt like that just kind of really closed in any gaps there. But here's the completed piece. And I think that this turned out beautiful and I loved it. It was so fun to create and kind of come up with all these little different elements here. And I've held on to this little house for quite some time and had no idea what I was going to do with it and I really felt like this ended up being such a lovely piece and how cute for all of Easter and all of spring to have this sit out. What do you guys think of this one? Do you like it? All of today's projects were seriously so much fun to create. I love how they all turned out and they are all so different yet each of them is very beautiful and I do just love the fact that that birdhouse I can just leave that up year round. It really is not just a springtime DIY but I love how it turned out and both of these Easter DIYs turned out so cute as well. Don't forget that today's video is part of an Easter collaboration. Thank you so much to Liana for putting this together. She does such a great job at getting us all together each month. But all you have to do is just click that link that's in my description box or pinned in my comments. It's going to take you right over to the playlist and you can watch everybody's videos and see all of the beautiful Easter DIYs that they have made and get all of the inspiration that you need. You guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Happy crafting. If you like the video that you just saw and you want to keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.